This may just be the best year to start a YouTube channel, and I'm speaking from experience. I started four new channels in the last month, and they are already outperforming the early videos on my main channel. This video is going to break down why. When I started my first YouTube channel in 2020, it took me three months before I reached 50 subscribers and 11 months before I hit the monetization requirements. I'm sure things would have progressed a lot quicker had I been aware of what it really takes to be successful on YouTube. Now there are endless videos on YouTube with tips and tricks, but for some reason, nobody leads with what seems to be the most important information to help someone just starting out succeed. Granted, the platform has changed over the years, and the introduction of shorts has opened up the playing field to allow new YouTubers to come in and fast track their growth to some degree. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's take a look at the first lesser known secret when it comes to growing your YouTube channel. Back when I started in 2020, the way to grow a YouTube channel was through SEO. The idea was to jam as many search terms into your title in the hope that one of them would be picked up by the algorithm. However, the platform has changed over the years and yes, people still search for specific search terms and I'm not saying ignore SEO completely, but it appears that the attitude of somebody coming to YouTube has changed from, I need to search for something specific to what do you have for me today, YouTube? This is especially true if you scroll your homepage and move through shorts, as opposed to specifically searching for content on a specific topic. So what this means is that the packaging of your video is more important than ever because it is competing against a variety of videos on your homepage, as well as the options suggested in search. But we can't even begin to discuss the packaging of your video if we don't address the next point first. What is your video about? Better yet, what is your channel about? I used to feel strongly that you don't need to niche down. However, since I repurposed my content on new channels so that they fit a specific niche, videos that seem dead all of a sudden got a new life. If you're just starting out and you're not sure of what content you want to make, try it all, but learn from my mistake. You can't be everything to everyone. Once you find a niche that you're sure you can stick to for years, then get rid of everything else and focus on that topic alone. But here's a pro tip. Whatever topic you decide to focus on, be confident that it's going to add value. What I mean by this is that people are more likely to watch your content and to share your content if you leave them with something they didn't have before they started the video, be it a tip, a trick, a hack, a habit, maybe a look inside or an inside scoop or a secret, you get the point. So even if you're creating for yourself, ensure that you're being mindful of how this is going to better the life of someone else watching it. But having an idea of what content you want to make won't get you anywhere if you don't know how to form a title that will get the click. Now, how do you write a good title? Many of us starting out on YouTube may have originally seen somebody's video and then after the video end up thinking to ourselves, well, if they can do it, I absolutely can give this a bash as well. More often than not, this could lead to you creating a very similar video to theirs, where their video could be called 10 personal finance tips, perhaps you call yours 11 personal finance tips. Now, if I think back, I think the strategy was actually quite successful around 2019 or earlier. But these days, if you wanna be successful on YouTube, you need to be thinking outside of the box. I'm going to share a free resource with you that has inspired the titles that I use for my videos. And I think it's important to say that before I even start scripting or filming a video, I have my title locked down. It's way easier to create a video once you've got a title that's pretty good than having a video somewhat formed or even finished and you're not sure what you're going to call it and you just try stuff the video into a title and it, it doesn't really align properly. Now, this weekly newsletter breaks down titles that are performing well, and they analyze why the title is gaining momentum. And not only that, they give you ideas on how you can adjust the title so that it could fit your niche. Now, they provide hundreds of titles and from many different niches. So you can look at what works for one niche, and then you could customize it to fit your content. I'm not sponsored or affiliated to this website in any capacity, at least not yet, <laughs> but I will leave a link in the description to this website so you can check out these titles for yourself. But a good title isn't enough. For your YouTube videos to get the click, you need people to look at your thumbnail and ask at least three questions. A pretty picture of you won't do, and repeating your title in your thumbnail is a waste of an opportunity. Here are some examples of titles and thumbnails that work beautifully together. 
for this thumbnail, I found myself asking, what is this? Can I afford it? How does it work? Without words, it is a fantastic combination of both a title and a thumbnail. For this thumbnail, I'm asking, what are the problems? What is wrong with the shoe? Weren't barefoot shoes all the rage just a few months ago? And for one more example, if I'm looking at this thumbnail, I'm asking, huh, what's so special about it? How does it work? Is this for everyone? If you're thinking of adding text to your thumbnails, I found that words like this or change seem to perform relatively well. And generally speaking, less is more when it comes to the amount of words you have on your thumbnail. But onto the next secret. A good thumbnail and title may get you the click, but people need to enjoy your video for YouTube to promote it. I've seen many new YouTubers make the common mistake of either starting without any intention, perhaps bringing their logo onto screen immediately, or they open their first frame with asking for a like or a subscription. In essence, you're asking people to click on your video, and if they do, you want to reward their click. You don't want to go straight into a second ask. If you do want to include a call to action, I found that it's better to do this towards the end of the video, or at least after you've provided your audience with value. So an example of this is if you have found any of the points that I've shared so far today valuable, then give this video a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that this was a good video. Thank you. So we know we don't want to start with an ask, but how should you start your script for your video? Here is one of the biggest takeaways I've had so far after all of the years in the game, and I hope you find it as valuable as I have, but my strategy is twofold. This is phase one. Earlier on, I suggested a resource that shows you which titles have taken off. Now, what I do is I select a title that is in a different niche that I think could apply to my niche, and then I go ahead and watch that video. And usually, like I've mentioned, this is from a completely different niche, but I still pay attention to how the video started and how the points were delivered. I've observed that videos that start with a story, a hook or a statement are usually the videos that keep me engaged with a piece of content the longest. But building on from this point, what if your video is a listicle? See if you can spot the mistake in this video. Here are three things I do before planting time for the first time. First, I'd assess the lighting. Next, I'd see if I need potting soil or compost. And finally, I'd get my hands on what I think is called plant food, the stuff that helps nourish your plants in addition to watering them. Anything you say after you've made your point can come across as redundant. Consider preloading your point with either a story, a statement, or a question. This seems to incentivize viewers to stick around until you make your point. But please make sure that everything that you say leading up to your point is relevant, otherwise you risk your content coming across as a little bit irritating. But for part two of my strategy, now, I personally haven't heard anybody else say they do this on YouTube yet, so I hope this is information that you won't find anywhere else on the internet, and I'm excited that I get to share it with you. But what I do is when I'm scripting out my YouTube videos, I try to script it in such a way that each point I deliver can also be a YouTube short with its own title that links back to this video. In essence, for each YouTube video I make, I try to make two to three shorts that can drive traffic to it. So let's say I post my long form YouTube video on a Monday, my two shorts that would have come from the information in that actual video will be shared on Wednesday and Friday. So if you go back to the points that I've made in this current video, you will see that it is seamless for me to edit them so that I can share them to shorts without a lot of additional work. Now these secrets that I've shared with you today, I feel are essential for everybody to know when they're thinking about packaging and creating their pieces of content for YouTube. But if you're not sure of how to film yourself, then I think all of those are a little bit redundant. So if videography is something that's completely new to you, then I think you will find this video particularly valuable.